You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the options playbook, the program where we break down cutting edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of The Option Playbook. Well, in this week's episode of The Options Playbook, I think I'm going to title it Rinse and Repeat. Um, and the main reason why is that we looked last week at a time bomb butterfly and like everything on options playbook radio, nothing's meant to be a recommendation. We're looking more so at market conditions that might warrant the strategy than we are on our forecasting, right? We're just, we're basically all the plays inside the playbook are on the table and we're trying to find times when these plays might work, not necessarily the perfect underlying or the perfect forecast, but we like to look at strategies like when volatility is high, like it is right now, the VIX index uh, closed today right around 20. And when that volatility is high, we want to do strategies that benefit when volatility comes down. So that's kind of a scenario that we looked at. Specifically, we look a lot of strategies like that around earnings and what we have going on right now, ever since the beginning of October, one of the always known as one of the most volatile months in the marketplace, it seems to hold true year in and year out. Um, we have been very volatile. And right now we had, we're taping options playbook radio on the 12th of December. And I, and I know that because that is my mother's birthday. Happy birthday, mother. And uh, the market is closed and the market did have a, a good day today trading. Uh, the market today finished up uh, on the S&P 500 index about half a percent up 14 points and the Dow Jones Industrial Average finished at 24,527 up 157 points on the day. So with that said, the VIX did come down, but it wasn't a big down day in the VIX. Uh, the VIX is actually uh, trading higher than it was last week when we did our strategy in the time bomb butterfly. It's trading at 2146 and it's only down 30 cents on the day. So the rinse and repeat theme comes from the fact that I mentioned last week when I, when this type of strategy where we're trying to buy butterflies, they are always cheaper when volatility is higher. And the main reason why is that you're always sen selling these two fairly at the money option contracts to try to pay for an option contract that's further out of the money, but one that's a little bit closer uh, to the money also. And so when volatility is high, butterflies have a tendency to be cheaper. And that was definitely the case last week. So I'm going to start by just talking about last week and the market actually turned out uh, just fine on, on, on last week's trade. Uh, the VIX last week, when we looked at it, the, it was right around 20 today. It's about 21 46. Uh, we had the S&P 500 index trading at 2,700. And we went out and did a butterfly. So 2,700 was actually 27, 
uh, 2,700.06 is where the market closed at last Wednesday. The market was not open that day it, uh, because of President Bush's funeral. Uh, they had actually closed the markets. But the day before, that's where it actually ended up trading on the 4th, which I guess that would be the close on the 5th then. And we looked at doing uh, 2,700 put. We bought that long. We sold two of the 2,680 puts and bought one of the 2,660 puts. And so that's a 20-point wide butterfly. That means in the S&P 500 index, you're talking about three quarters of a percent, a 20 point wide move. Uh, since we bought right at the money with our with our long leg, we started right at the money at 2,700. That's what we were looking for. We were able to get that entire trade done for about two dollars and twenty five cents. And just from experience, I'll tell you, that was a two day trade. Uh, we put it on on the fifth in theory because everything's a paper trade here on, on Options Playbook Radio, and it had two full days to trade in in concept. It would have traded all day on the sixth, all day on the seventh, and then expired on on the Friday the seventh uh, after the day's trading. That's what they was, were weekly options, and that's when they stopped trading. So we did that trade. And we were able to do it for two dollars and twenty five cents. Now, normally, if the VIX is down around, I'll say twelve percent to fifteen percent, somewhere more in the the normal like five year mean range of the VIX index, uh, you're looking at paying three fifty to almost four hundred dollars for that same type of butterfly. Just just so you know, just from experience from from trading so much in, in my world, I, I know that that's where it would be at. So we're getting it, in my mind, at a discount. And the forecast was correct. Basically, the underlying index uh, for the next two days stayed between the strikes, stayed between 2660 and 2700. It dipped down a little bit um, below the, the 2660 range, but there were many opportunities to get out. And I just went in and looked at one scenario at the very end of the market, just cause it was a paper trade. So I, I looked at the, at the close on Thursday, the sixth and this position, uh, the market actually closed on that day at 2696. OK, it closed at twenty six ninety six, almost back to the twenty seven hundred level. Right. But this trade on that close was up a dollar fifteen. Uh, that's just the midpoint pricing on the marketplace. It was up a dollar fifteen. So if you were if you fell asleep for the entire market day and missed about the 30 point swing from high to low, in the in the SPX index, where it basically touched the short strike many times, um, then you still made a buck on the trade, even even if you just close it out at the end of the market. Okay, so rinse and repeat. Got the VIX still at 21, uh, basically the same scenario. Let's do another one. Let's go on out and buy the s and uh, or buy the time bomb butterfly where today the market and once again i'm going to repeat it's a 12 12 december 12th wednesday markets closed uh, market closed at 2651.07 we'll call it basically 2650 and we're going to do another 20 point wide butterfly and in this scenario we would buy the 2650 sell two of the 2630s buy one of the 2610s and that at the midpoint now is trading for $2.45. So midpoint's a little bit different than last week, but that also means our max risk for every one by two by one butterfly for every unit is $225 plus commission. And that's our max risk. And once again, we got a, a lot of upside, but the upside only occurs if the market goes right to our short strike 2630 and sits there right at expiration. But uh, it could be worth 20 bucks. Minus what we paid for it, 245. The max upside would be 1755. And once again, if you ever make 1755 on a butterfly, you should really receive the stupid award for doing it because you should have been out way earlier than that, right? You're not looking for a home run. That's not what butterflies are all about. Uh, making a buck or two or even doubling is is a great butterfly. Uh, you know, you pay 245 for it, you sell it for five bucks. I mean, that's a that's a home run in in, in my world. Okay, so. That's going to be the trade for this week. And 
we're now in an up market today. Now, I guess it was up bigger earlier, but uh, bottom line is it's a mo uh, last week it was more of a trending down market. Now we've got a little bit of a trending up market. So I didn't talk about the hedge last week. And uh, what, what I'd like to do here is that if we open up tomorrow and the market opens up, let's call, let's say 10 points, 15 points, uh, even 20 points, which is, is not unfathomable. That'd be three quarters of a percent if it was about 20 points. Um, what we're going to do is then roll this position and we're going to roll it into a short put spread. So I've given you a lot to chew on here, but here's what the trade would be. I have that butterfly on the 2650, 2630, 2610. We're going to sell the most expensive option contract and buy the cheapest option contract. So we would look to go out and sell to close the 2650 strike option and then effectively but use those proceeds to buy the 2610 strike option contract and in that instance uh, we're trying to bring in a net credit to the account to pay for the debit and we would do that when the net credit started to go down on this trade right so right now, if you did that trade, you would receive $12.65, and you would have a lot of risk. You would be in a two-by-two two short put spread that's 20 points wide, so you have a requirement of about $4,000, or $4, uh, $2,000 for each spread, and you did two spreads. So when I'm doing this type of trade, and this is why I kind of like this hedge, the market does go against me. The market's trending up, and that's what you want with a short uh, put spread, but right now it's trading for $12.65. So you have a lot of leeway before you have to actually do this trade because you only paid $2.45 for it. So here's what my scenario would be is I would just put an alert on that spread. And if that spread ever got down to six bucks or seven bucks, you decide where you want to be. I'm going to sell that spread to help pay for my butterfly. And then I'm just going to be long a short put spread and really hope that by the end of the day Friday, because remember, this is a two-day trade. It's a two-day trade. It, it, it expires on December 14th. Um, so if I do this entire scenario, I'm hoping that the market just either stays where it's at. It's already up a few points. We're in a 20, 26, uh, 30 by 2610 put spread in this scenario. And uh, we'd say the market would be, if we did this roll, I'm going to guess market would probably be at about 26.75 or 26.80. That's about where the spread would be at. And we really just kind of have to let it let it roll and, and see if it will expire worthless. And hence, we still make a profit on our trade. I don't want the cheese anymore. Just let me out of the trap. All right. A little bit long-winded this week, but I did want to talk a little bit more about uh, the actual hedge position or, or how I would adjust this position on a very short trade. And once again, it's uh, VIX stays at 20. It's rinse and repeat. VIX gets down to 15, 12. I don't think I like this trade as much. All right. That's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, send them directly to me at theoptionsguy at invest.li.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.